So our next speaker is Karsten Binning um, from the Computer Science Department at Brown University, and uh, he's among the heads of our data sharing spoke. So uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Karsten Binnig. Um, I am today talking about so uh, uh, our efforts on the data sharing spoke. So what we've done so far. What are the initial results? Uh, this all is uh, joint work together with other. Uh, uh, representatives from different universities. For example, Jane Greenberg, she should be somewhere here in the audience. Yeah, just hi, Jane. Uh, and as well as uh, Sam Madden from MIT and Tim Kraska, my colleague at Brown University. So if you talk to people out there, uh, is data sharing a good idea? The answer is typically what you get, yes. So sharing is a really great idea because there are different reasons why sharing actually might give you better insights into your data set. So first, we already heard it, if you take data from different institutions, uh, coming from doctors or research institutions, if you put it together, you might be able to answer questions that we haven't been able to answer before. So taking environmental data, taking patients' data, maybe taking, taking even da data that comes from, uh, from genome or sequencing machines and really looking into, into the different, different aspects of one, of one field. Uh, the second reason is why you want to share data sets maybe is, so typically data collection uh, and understanding are not, let's say, present in the same entity. Some, some entities collect data, like many of the open uh, data initiatives, they collect a lot of data, but they not necessarily have the, uh, let's say, uh, the expertise to analyze the data. And the same holds for more closed data sets. So some people actually collect data sets like banks, and they, yes, they, they, they have a lot of statisticians looking at the data, but still, if you would maybe give it to a research institution, you would, would get a little bit more out of the data set than just uh, you, you would, would do on your own. So having that said, there are already a lot of good examples where shared data sets actually help. So one example is, uh, that I'd like to frequently cite is the collaborat uh, Collaborative Cancer Cloud, where different institutions came together just to uh, share securely genomic data so that you can answer questions about different types of cancer. So some institutions collect specialized data sets on one con cancer type uh, versus others uh, collect data sets on other cancer types. And bringing these together, bringing the expertise together is actually pretty helpful in terms of so I can also get data about other cancer types that I haven't been before by sharing my data set. So there's a mutual, let's say, benefit between these institutions and there's a natural, let's say, motivation of sharing the data set. A second example is just in the area of financial market. Uh, that's a pretty nice example. Uh, so uh, where a bank or financial institution has shared data with MIT, with the Sloan School, and they, instead of, uh, so the, the goal was to, provide a new model for better analyzing the risk of, of customer credits. And so what you see here is the interesting thing that is the, let's say, a standard metric that the banks use, yeah, the banks are, are using, the FICO score, is actually pretty bad. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's actually random noise. What you see here is on the left side is, uh, so if uh, the, the FICO score is, is low, meaning there's a low risk for the credit. And what you see actually here is that the, so the, the payments from the customers are coming either right in time to completely delayed. So it's actually for the low rated customer, so low risk customers, you have actually all the customers in the spectrum. So the, the, the score does not work. If you look at the model that uh, the researchers at, at MIT developed, just the, the other way around, you have the low risk, uh, low risk uh, customers here and the high risk customers here. You see much a str stronger correlation between the real world and the data that they, uh, the, uh, and the, the actual rating uh, that, the, that the score provides, right? Uh, so here the answer or the, the, the message is you have to get the data in the right hands in order to get the best knowledge out of the data. But the question is now, okay, uh, data sharing is a good idea, but if it comes to practice, so uh, you see it's actually data sharing can be, so uh, if you talk about, okay, if I get ice cream from somebody else, I, I like that idea, but if I, if I have to share my ice cream or here, the water bottle, it's actually not that good. So uh, the question is, okay, that what, what we always, always or often get is, so um, data sharing seems it's a solved problem. There are a lot of these open sharing uh, initiatives, there are licenses out there how you can, uh, that allow you to share a data set. But we think this is actually not enough. So there are a lot of data sets out there where people um, that are either proprietary or people are just not willing to share because of certain reasons. And the obstacles or the barriers of data sharing are often in the fact or have many dimensions. So uh, there are many, many reasons why data sharing uh, is why people don't want to share their data set. So one, the, 
and the most prevalent one is uh, that the incentive is not clear. So if I'm a research institution, I collected for many years a data set, which is maybe my next uh, or basis for my next 10 publications, 20 publications. Why should I share this data set? So if I don't get anything back, why should I share it? Uh, and in, in, the, in the cancer cloud example, it was clear, I get data back, so I can do more than I can do, could do before. Um, so the question is, how can we convince people to share data sets, and what are the in incentives of sharing data sets? The second reason is often that they are concerns about sensitive information, but also regulations govern, go that somehow govern the use of data in different domains. For example, there are regulations in HIPAA or FERPA, uh, so how data is allowed to be shared, and what data is allowed to be shared, and how data needs to be de-identified, so personal uh, information is in there. And many, many researchers are just afraid if I share it, maybe uh, I don't fulfill all the regulations. I, I don't want to share my data set uh, because uh, there, are, there are major concerns and I'm, I'm not re really, I don't see the full spectrum of consequences if I share it. And the last one is really, I just don't, I, I don't want to lose control. So I, if I give away my data set, if you look in the data sharing agreements today, there is a sentence in there that says, uh, the data expires after two years. So I've never seen data expiring if somebody has the data. So there is no auditing. I asked my, our technology transfer office, so what happens if somebody just does not delete the data and says, so yeah, well, it's sitting there. So uh, no, at the moment, there, in many cases, uh, nobody will goes out and does an audit and checks if the data is actually removed from their servers or, 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 or not. So uh, how is data sharing happening today? Uh, so if it's more about proprietary and sensitive data, in the first, first place, uh, what, what, what needs to be negotiated is a legal agreement. And a legal agreement often involves like, involves like a, a bunch of lawyers talking about the, each individual aspect again. So that you maybe you had already data sharing with another institution, but again, it's, uh, institutions are different. You start again the negotiation process, and they, at the end you end up with a data sharing agreement. If you look into them, there are still many, let's say, boilerplate texts and um, parts in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in such an agreement that ha could have been maybe, uh, let's say, not, uh, kind of uh, uh, standardized, or uh, it wouldn't be necessary to actually give them or that law lawyers need to talk about them. Um, but, uh, and the second problem is that these things are often uh, causes that uh, uh, so um, prevent even the data sharing. So if, 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 if institutions talk to each other uh, and uh, talk about a legal agreement for data sharing, uh, uh, often, often they start with a good in uh, intention, but then at a point they say, okay, maybe it was not a good idea to share my, or that I want to share my data set, let's stop it here. So some of these uh, uh, endeavors actually stop because uh, they, they don't end up with a legal agreement that, uh, that is actually good for both sides. So what we want to do with the data sharing spoke is actually tackle this problem from th three sides. So we want to develop a data sharing licensing framework uh, which uh, somehow gives us some standardized terms how to talk about these uh, agreements. So we want, at the end, we want to be able in the uh, pipe dream to compile a license out of the different uh, options that a user can select from. Uh, the second point is, uh, oh, nice numbering scheme. Uh, the, <laughs> the second point is that we want to actually build a sh sharing platform that automates some or enforces some of these terms that are in an in a agreement. For example, if there is a statement that we should fulfill the HIPAA requirements for personal identifiable information, it should be enforced by the, by the platform automatically. And we want to provide metadata for searching, oh, wow, <laughs> two minutes, uh, searching uh, the, uh, the licenses and the data. And the principle is to solve the 80% case. We don't want to go for each individual uh, agreement, each individual statement in such an agreement. We want to look into, into these agreements in, with a perspective. Uh, so what, where's the bank for the buck? So what, where, where can we reduce the lawyer's efforts and automate these things as much as possible? So let me just go over the idea. As I said, the idea is you check uh, different, uh, different, let's say, different standard terms and compile your license out of that. So what are the first results that we achieved? First. So we had a big workshop last year talk, bringing in 60 participants from industry and academia, actually talking about how data sharing agreements look like. Look like. And thanks to Jane, it was hosted at Drexel. It was a big success and we got all more confused after the, <laughs> after the workshop because data sharing agreements are actually hard. So we went on and collected data sharing agreements, oops, sorry, uh, and compiled already a list of standard terms out of these agreements. And so 
how the goal is, as I said, we want to be able to give these standard, uh, standard terms about, for example, uh, what is, how is PII handled, et cetera, to, uh, to, the, to the users to be able to select from those and uh, compile their own licenses. And in a second set, so once we compile these licenses, uh, we want to automate them. And here, the idea is uh, a user wants to share his data set, uh, and the licensing agreement might talk about, let's say, certain enforce a training before the user is allowed to ac access the data. So before getting the data, we want to enforce that training, for example, is mandatory. So if he, for example, gets a medical data set, he needs to do a, a, certain, a certain training before he uh, is allowed to take the data set. Second, we started already developing methods for automatically de-identifying data. So we, we, at the moment, we develop a tool that allows us to take a data set, and we saw that HIPAA is actually one of the, uh, let's say, prevalent or uh, uh, factors in, in many of the, uh, of the agreements when, when we talk about medical data. So we, have, we, are starting, we started to work on a de-identification so de tool. So up before uploading the data, uh, the user gets actually, let me jump to the very back of the slides. Uh, so a tool which gives him somehow the insights about, okay, which columns, which, da which data items, even on the row level, might violate uh, certain HIPAA requirements. For example, that are not allowed to be zip codes in the data where less than 20,000 people are living in a region. So this ne these data items need to be, need to be automati automatically de-identified and cleaned from the data set. And we are working on a tool to do that automatically as a part of our data sharing, uh, data sharing platform. Okay, what are the next steps? Uh, so uh, the idea is, once we have our first version of the idea how such a license could look like, we want to do a second workshop again, revisiting with, a, with, a, with the same audience we had last year. So this is our idea how first license could look like. Would, you, would that be something that is acceptable for you? Um, we are about uh, also to extend our tooling support not only to de-identifying ident information. We have other ideas about watermarking. So one problem is you want to track if somebody copies your data and just out and, and hosts it outside of the day of your database and derives information out of shared uh, out of our shared platform and what we want to be able to track at least uh, to a certain extent track this data again so if somebody publishes this data electronically we want to find out it came from our from our from our from our from our platform and uh, the last thing that we also need to start is thinking more about how make, how to make these data and licenses searchable uh, and uh, better reusable Okay, that's it, what we, where we are so far. Uh, we are pretty excited. We got a bunch of different licenses and it's really a challenge to understand this, this field in total. Okay, so far, uh, I'm, that's what we have. Uh, I'm happy to take any question from you. Yeah, oops. So, they, so what I didn't talk about is interoperability. It's, it's, so we have as a part of the metadata support, it's not only the metadata, it's also the schema of the data. We want to address also the data integration aspect, which is another aspect of, of data sharing. So data comes in different formats. People want to upload their data uh, with, into, and maybe even upload their data and transform it into a certain standardized form, right? So we, we have some uh, uh, work packages about data integration in the, in the proposal, but it's not the main. So we try to leverage what is out there. We, the database community already developed a bunch of tools in this direction. So we, we will provide data integration tools, uh, but it's, uh, and leverage whatever. Just, just there. extend that though, are there some general universal rules for uh, permitting interoperability that you can lay out on the data sets? Okay, is there a, a set of universal behavior uh, rules? Certainly have your metadata uh, well uh, organized and, and available and registered is, is important, but you need to have something on top of that to make it interoperable. So, for example, I've been working a lot in the field of, of ontologies, right? So uh, there's ontology-based data access methods. And what we do try to do is actually incrementally map whatever the user gives us into one or not one, but maybe established ontology in a certain field that people actually know how to query the data. And this is uh, one proposal that we, that we think about. Uh, there might be other solutions to it. Trust and identity tools for secure data sharing. So, uh, trust and identity tools are also a part of, of the of the of the of the things we see also in agreements. Um, 
at the moment, uh, as we said, we started with the one where we, so we, we screened a lot of agreements already. And so we started with the, with the identif so personal identifiable data, but yes, um, we, a second thing that we saw is, is in, the, in, the, in this direction, but we haven't started to work on okay, it yet. We can help with that. That would be great. Too, yeah. uh, wow, good. Another, uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, just to pick up on the, the, the previous two questions, uh, in general, uh, I guess, is there a data governance platform that you might consider as an umbrella for these type of issues that are being discussed? So uh, uh, you, you ask if there's already some existing platform for it. So uh, we, in particular for the project, build on an established platform at MIT, which is called the Data Hub, which also already presents some governance, access control, versioning of the data. So, uh, so it's called Data Hub. Uh, and Sam, who's on, who's the PI also of this project? Uh, so, what was former PI of the Data Hub, and we leverage whatever has been done in that direction. All right, we have time for one more question. Thanks. And you know, the, the very nice presentation. Thanks. Uh, it took me to the older days when, let's say, P2P multimedia distribution started. You know, digital rights management systems. So there has been very well established IEEE activities on video distribution, you know, audio distribution. Yes. Uh, but you know, obviously, you need central, you know, uh, organization to verify the keys, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, PKI and others. I am sure you know you and your team are closely following what's existing on yeah, the yeah. secure P2P yeah. domain. So. Uh, first of all, there are many there are many areas where it just can build up on and uh, P2P ideas. So we we don't want to have that decentralized stores, but maybe it's another nice extension to allow people actually to host their own data sets and integrate them into into the platform as well without giving the ha data actually out of hands. Um, there are a lot of techniques we will leverage. Uh, uh, the focus at the moment is really under, so I think the cr crucial point is understanding the agreements and make the, this so this initial step of sharing. Uh, uh, much more easier. So we start from the the other end. So which is strange for computer scientists. We would so usually we start from the technology side, but this time we start from the actually from the agreement and from the soft side and try to automate as much as possible there. Yeah, because I remember MPEG 11 standard was really handled by lawyers to get from the get go. Yeah, which which is quite mature technology. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you.